Shybro, Father James Wallace, Deacon Henry Lyon. Whoa, hey. <laughs> Change it up. Yeah, because we are going to talk about how we are different from each other. Mm. I was thinking of titling this. could be a this. long one. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of titling this Opposites, uh, but instead we went by uh, Jimmy and Henry. Who are they? Yeah, so that's the first thing that we do differently is I go by my full name, James, mm -hmm. uh, whereas Hank right. goes by his nickname. Right. Hank is the nickname of the full name. Henry. Hankulus. Oh, okay. Is it? <laughs> what, what is it? Hockley? <laughs> there are many iterations of that. Henry, right? Henry. Yes. Now, I one of the things I love doing is making nicknames for people that stick, and Hawk was one of them that the kids enjoyed calling. Henry's definitely <laughs> making yes, H A N C Honk. So I went by. I actually didn't go by Jimmy as a kid. I actually went by Jamie. Uh, that's what my, um, my mom called me and I hated that nickname. So as soon as I got to high school, I went back to James and now I'm known as father James, but Hank chooses to go by the nickname. Yeah. I've had that nickname since I, uh, since I can remember parents like the name always the, uh, hammer and hank line that's right what are some other differences between the <laughs> two of us <laughs> not just our names, um, I can name a few. You can name a few. Absolutely. Do you want me to go first? If you like. Okay. Um, remember we had to do that uh, Myers Briggs. Oh, gosh. So don't when break that up. <laughs> Hank was go made seminarian it. here, and I was supposed to be his mentor or supervisor right. or whatever. They thought it'd be a great idea to. They put everyone through Myers Briggs to compare yeah. our personalities. Because that I... was going to be helpful. <laughs> yeah, I forget the the numbering or. The, I can never forget the letters. The letters of it, but everything. mine was like the super type A. Like right. organized, aggressive, scheduled. Yes. Yeah, you were like the flower child. I got pegged <laughs> as a flower child. What does yeah. that mean? <laughs> yeah, kind of linguini, art, spined. <laughs> philosophy. Yeah. So Hank's more of the art. I'm more of the athlete. Um, though we both are equally bad at golf. Um, no. <laughs> Hank. Hank is kind of like blonde. I'm more like brown hair. I He's have got a hair. Full <laughs> hair. I'm balding. Though you I have can, a full beard. I have a full beard. Have Hank beard. has a full peach fuzz <laughs> set right. going on there. Uh, he was like, Hank's like the poster boy for Mundelein, and I was like the guy they tried to keep out of the picture because <laughs> they didn't want to scandalize uh, people from becoming priests. <laughs> what are some of our other differences? Uh, shoot. Was that what you're all going to say? <laughs> Dang it. Might have been. I, I do you like to read? I mean, you're kind of. I hated reading, and I've slowly come to enjoy more reading. I so I'm a big reader. I, I read constantly. I finish books. Is Hank, it fair Hank to say really that you speed books. through books and I savor books? It's yeah, it's a good. It's kind of. I think that goes for many things. Yeah, you, I, I, I'm more I'm, slow at things and savoring <laughs> and thoughtful and meaningful, and I'm more quick and impulsive and Direct. trying to get it done. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so anything else? I'm sure we'll have other oh, yeah, differences as we as you we go. You compete. I enjoy the, the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm very competitive. You have to win. I just like being there. <laughs> so we were thinking of, okay, but we get along. We're, we're good right. buddies. Oh, yeah. I think we're, uh, are you my friend, Danny? <laughs> Let go there. <laughs> we, we work together here at St. Mm -hmm. Juliana, uh, obviously on this podcast. We share the same passion for our Lord and yeah, priesthood. Yeah, definitely, definitely on the same wavelength there. You're going to have, and I think this actually is kind of somewhat serious, um, kind of towards parents, okay? Because you're going to have children that are different from each other. Are you, so Hank has a... Has an older brother. Yeah, he and you know, I are like complete opposites. My brother and I, he's the physicist, I'm the art guy. Uh, yet the one thing that we definitely bond over is humor and any kind of stupid humor too. Yeah, and I've got a brother and two sisters and we're all very different. And I'm sure many parents who have multiple children or just maybe one child uh, who's different than you, you're, you're encountered with this phenomenon. Uh, my parents, and I'm sure Hank's parents, mm -hmm. raised their children raised us all the same way mm -hmm. and yet we're, we're different right my brother got to stay indoors i was raised outside <laughs> it's but, <the> nature <laughs> flower boy but that doesn't mean one is inferior than the other mm -hmm. but i think it's easy for us to be inclined or attracted to people that are like us right 
and to not fall into the trap of if someone doesn't kind of go along the same wavelength as you to obviously you don't want to like hate them and despise them and shun them right but how can you love them and appreciate them and encourage them i guess to live out a mission that's going to be as fulfilling as maybe the way you you yourself live it out or you would have wanted it to be lived out because it's easier to connect with guys or women that think along your same lines um there's just an easier way to jive together but when someone comes and has a different mindset or uh, interest or something there's it takes an extra mental step to kind of clue into okay where is this guy coming from what is he talking about and that really takes an act of love to show interest in that other person so parents i think this is one of the hard really hard things about being a parent and i give you credit we're not parents ourselves. Nope. We pray for you. But to really be attentive, especially if your child is not like you, if they are, in fact, the opposite of you, do you, uh, how do you, obviously you love them, but how do you love them? I'll give an example. Not, again, I'm not a parent, but I know with uh, my one grandfather, he is more like my brother. They're both physicists and, you know, really heady in that department. Um, so I always felt like, okay, my brother gets along better with my, with that grandfather than I do. But over the years, I've come to understand more of my interests and they kind of expanded. One thing I love is just get out in the country, get out in the open field and all that. And my grandfather, who's a physicist, was um, raised in Iowa, raised in the countryside. And that kind of became something that we bonded over. But it, it took time to find those common interests and to really pay attention to the person in front of me. Yeah, so Jean C. Delbay, who wrote a book called I Believe in Love, it's kind of a classic uh, retreat text. He says, here on earth, love proves itself by free choice. When a man loves, he chooses that which he prefers. Jesus wants to be chosen, not preferred. That's the quote. I think your children would say the same thing. They want to be chosen, not preferred. We all have our preferences, but true love is, is to choose them and choose to bring that individual into your heart, regardless of how they, what, who they are and what their preferences or habits or things might be. Uh, think of all the, the opposites in our church and how harmonious our church is because of that. Mm-hmm. Peter and Paul. Yeah, the depth of it all. Uh, certainly the apostles, even before Paul, had a wide amount of differences among them. There were simple fishermen, tax collectors, and zealots like Nathaniel. The zealot is not going to want to sit next to the tax collector, uh, Matthew. But Jesus cho chose them, called them, and loved them. Therese of Lisieux, Teresa of Avila, two Carmelites, uh, very different. You think of the whole contemplative aspect of the church versus the missionary aspect of the church. So everything all needs to come together. That's what St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 18. But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. We're all part of this one body. Each one of us is necessary. So uh, parents especially, but everyone, uh, do your best to love your neighbor even if they're different than you, just like Deacon Hank and I try our best to uh, get along. Get along, quote unquote. God bless you. Peace.